need everyone everyone's help and your prayers we believe in your prayers we can move mountains it can be a miracle we will find my sister a family pleads for answers tonight nearly a month after their loved one's disappearance Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carla Chiquetto and I'm Marcella Lee and for Barbara Lee Edwards, the family of Maya Millette held a rally today in the hopes of raising more awareness about her disappearance. Millette is the mom from Chula Vista last seen at her home back on January 7th. Police have updated the family on where the investigation stands right now. News 8's Heather Hope has the latest and what Maya Millette's husband is saying. With signs saying pray for May and find Maya, family members, friends, and even total strangers took to the streets to rally up support to find a missing mother. Holding up missing Maya signs on the corner right outside the Chula Vista Police Department, family and friends are rallying for help as the family pleads for answers. Please bring her home. We need our sister. Her kids, they need they need their mom. Millette's sister broke down in tears, surrounded by family, wearing t-shirts with her face pictured on them. They we're not going to give up until we get made back home to find me, get, get answers to the case. The growing concern for family is getting answers from police. Do not assume that this is not a priority to our police department. Chula Vista Police Chief Roxana Kennedy says no stone has been left unturned in searching for the 39-year-old mother who went missing on January 7th. I know it's difficult to be patient when someone you love is missing. Millette's husband, Larry Millette, nor any of the children were present at the rally. Yes, he has retained an attorney. Um, and he's no longer assisting us um, in our efforts to help find Maya. In a statement texted to CBS 8, Larry Millette says in part, I am grateful to the mayor, police chief, and CVPD for actively investigating our case. I really hope someone out there who has any information to help us locate my wife, Maya, will come forward. It's really difficult for our families right now. I'm trying to protect mine the best way I know how. Right now, we have no persons of interest. We don't have a suspect and we're still working the case. Investigators say they've scoured through 100 hours of video and are looking into all the evidence collected during the search warrant. The search has become a community-wide effort concerning the mayor of Chula Vista. Chula Vista comes together as a family, as a community of concern. Total stranger Ashley Fuentes came down from North County with her sign saying, we need answers. I don't know Maya. Um, I live in Escondido and it kind of touched my heart. I have a child of my own and if I went missing, I would I would want all eyes and ears to come together and try to find me. Helping a family to heal. Please help us find my sister. And it doesn't stop here. Tomorrow there will be another rallying effort to increase search awareness, but this time they're asking supporters to stay in their cars as it will be a drive-by event. Heather Hope, News 8. Tonight, the county is reporting its first pediatric death from COVID-19. Health officials say a 10-year-old boy with underlying medical conditions is among the 39 additional deaths being reported tonight. 2,777 people here in San Diego County have now died from COVID-19. Meantime, there were 1,453 new cases reported today. 6% of the more than 23,000 tests came back positive. Here's some encouraging news though. COVID hospitalizations fell for the 20th straight day. Those are down to 1,183. The ICU count also dropped to 353, and that is down 20% from the peak about two weeks ago. More much needed rent relief is coming to the city of San Diego. Today, Mayor Todd Gloria announced more than $45 million of state money will be made available to San Diegans who are struggling to pay their rent due to the pandemic. The program will provide one time payments of up to $4,000 per qualifying household to help pay past due or upcoming rent as well as utility debt. Having the flexibility with at least some of these dollars to try and pay off those debts as well um, is going to be good really for everybody. Um, those unpaid bills have the potential of showing up in everyone's water bills, and that's something I'd like to guard against. Applications are not open just yet, but you can sign up to be notified by the Housing Commission as soon as you apply, and then you can apply rather. We have a link to all that information on our website, cbs8.com. Just click on the help button. A bold statement from some students and parents in the Poway Unified School District. They brought their lawn chairs and laptops to Oak Valley Middle School for a virtual learning protest. 
While elementary and special education students return to some in-person instruction this week, middle and high school campuses are still largely closed, and parents say it is taking a toll on the kids. They have no clue that these kids are hurting. They're falling behind. They're losing hope. They're losing drive. They're losing their motivation. And we need to stand up for them because the district is failing our children right now. The Poway Unified School District's website says middle and high schools won't reopen until San Diego exits the purple tier because that is according to state guidelines. More than 1,100 active military duty personnel are being deployed to, fi uh, to five vaccination centers nationwide in an effort to help get more Americans vaccinated. Two of the five teams will be stationed at vaccination sites in California. Part of this group will start to arrive in California within the next 10 days. President Biden has called for setting up 100 mass vaccination centers across the U.S. during the next month. Meantime, in New York, opening day at Yankee Stadium took on new meaning as it will now serve as a mega vaccination site. The goal there to vaccinate 15,000 people per day. I've been trying for a long time and, you know, it was very disorganized and nobody seemed to have the vaccine. So this is wonderful. I went through COVID. I was hospitalized. Uh, so to, to actually be getting the vaccine and, 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 and letting my students know it's safe, it's really mind blowing. Yesterday, Johnson & Johnson submitted a request to the FDA for emergency authorization use of its single-shot vaccine. And the CDC says it will release its guidance on safely reopening schools in the week ahead. Crews have been working all day to repair two water main breaks in separate parts of the county. In El Cajon, crews have been working for more than 10 hours to get a main break repaired on Broadway between 1st and 2nd Streets. Helix water trucks are providing water to affected customers in the area. Meantime, in the Midway area, a main broke near Channel Way and Jupiter Street, causing a sinkhole that is also still being fixed. Tonight, crews remain at both scenes, working on repairs and cleaning up debris. Take a look at these pictures. San Diego police need your help finding an alleged groper in City Heights. They say this man lewdly grabbed one woman and rubbed up against another at separate businesses in January. The suspect was wearing yellowish pants, a gray shirt, a dark jacket, glasses, and a black face mask. He spoke both English and Spanish, and witnesses say walked in an unusual way. If you have any information, please call San Diego Police. The FBI needs your help tonight identifying the man who robbed a Chula Vista bank branch yesterday. Here are some pretty clear surveillance photos. It happened just after 2 p.m. at the Citibank on H Street. You can see the man here approached the teller, demanded money, and the teller gave him some cash, and then he took off. He was wearing a black zip-up hoodie with white strings and an orange and black striped shirt underneath. If you have any information on who this guy could be, call the San Diego FBI office or Crime Stoppers at the number there on your screen, 858-580-8477. We have a crime fighters alert tonight. Catalytic converter thefts continue across the county. News 8's David Godfordson spoke to a Prius owner in North Park who will have to pay thousands of dollars after thieves targeted his vehicle. It took them just a few minutes to steal our catalytic converter. Imagine walking out into the street in the morning and hearing something from underneath your car that you've never heard before. Our Prius, which is one of the you know most silent cars in the neighborhood, made this enormous loud noise. It, uh, it became the loudest car in the neighborhood. That's what happened to Jason Folkman in North Park. Thieves ripped off his car's catalytic converter on Saturday night. They target Toyota Prius vehicles because the converters are easy to remove and the catalytic converters contain precious metals that can be cashed in for money. This is going to cost us roughly around $4,000 that we have to replace the catalytic converter. Also, the tailpipe was damaged. Um, the O2 sensor was damaged. Take a look at this surveillance video from Chula Vista. News 8 aired last month. It shows two thieves ripping off a catalytic converter in a matter of minutes. One possible solution is to install an anti-theft shield that rivets to the bottom of your car to make it harder for thieves to remove the catalytic converter. There is actually a movement to make Toyota pay for, for these shields because it's such a rampant problem. There has been to date no success with that. Jason decided to have a shield installed to prevent future thefts 
once he gets his Prius repaired. If you're a Prius owner, you're basically a sitting duck. Um, I would install that shield as soon as possible or park my car in the garage. Uh, here we are live underneath my Toyota vehicle. This is the catalytic converter. And to install one of those anti-theft shields is going to cost you about 600 bucks for professional installation. Carlo? David, that does not look comfortable, but I do appreciate the demonstration. So do we have any idea what's leading to this crazy increase in catalytic converter thefts? Yes, it's an increase in the price of platinum in recent months is causing the thefts to go up. Jason, our friend in, uh, in North Park, when he took his Prius in to be fixed, uh, the mechanic told him he had fixed three other Priuses just this week alone who had their catalytic converters ripped off. All right, committed to this story and helping you out. David Gopperson reporting live. Thanks, David. Some reporter involvement right there, but super important and that he, that shield may be a good option. For and you people. can see exactly what it is on exactly. those cars, so yeah. we appreciate that, David.